two and a half year old Darcy Atkinson. A normal, mischievous, happy and healthy little boy. Adored by his mum and dad. <laughs> Good boy. You gonna come inside, Darcy? We'll go have dinner? Come on. <laughs> yes. Yes. Darcy was very quirky. Um, he was very gentle. He was bossy too, though. He just loved everybody. He just loved making people laugh. And the T-shirt says it all. Cheeky yes. little monkey. Yes. Darcy's mother, Tara Maxwell, who lived then in Terrigal, New South Wales, had separated from her husband, Peter Atkinson. They were based in different states, but Peter saw Darcy as often as he could every few weekends. Hi, Darcy. Hi. Hi. I hear you. It's what Peter heard from his little boy during his last visit with Darcy that left him concerned. He was trying to tell me that something was up. He'd say, bad man, so he'd hide under the, bat, under the bed, in the cupboard, under the computer um, desk. And he'd say, uh, he would say, madman as well. And he's absolutely obsessed with it. I'm, I'm looking after a two-year-old, and he's just all of a sudden, he's like passed out, and he looks really sick, he's been vomiting. A few weeks after Peter last saw Darcy, the little toddler was dead. Both parents are haunted by what happened to their child. They've ripped my whole life apart and given me this bag of sand. Tell me to bury it. <laughs> you want answers? I want answers. Four months before Darcy's death, his mum Tara began a new relationship with Adam Taylor. He was well off after selling his share in a local stockbroking business. So outwardly, he's a respectable businessman. Yes. But at the time that you came to know him, he was out of work. Yes, yep. And so what was he doing? He was um, volunteering at the RSPCA. He was um, he, he he worked at the um, Surf Life Saving Club. He was a, a big part of the community. Like so many single parents, Tara at the time was juggling full time work and motherhood. I felt guilty sometimes taking him to care and leaving him there. Five days a week, it's yeah, a bit it was, much. It was huge. Oh, he's a beautiful little boy. Did he have a sense of humour? <laughs> yeah, it did. It was funny. Thursday, was the 6th of December, 2012. A fateful day. Little Darcy didn't want to go to kindy. Darcy just said, no kids, no kids, which he sometimes said. So Adam offered to look after him? Yes, yeah, so um, Adam said that he would look after him. Um, he came around in the morning. How many times had Adam Taylor looked after Darcy? I would say eight. And did you feel comfortable? Yes, I did. Um, I put Darcy in the car seat and said goodbye and gave him a kiss. We all leave our children at different times in the care of other people, don't we? Yeah. And it's kind of implicit in that, that you expect that if something happens to your child, you'll be told about it. Absolutely. Do you believe Adam's told you everything that happened to Darcy that day? No. On that day, Adam Taylor says the pair enjoyed a happy morning. 
they paddled aboard on the local lagoon. And then went back to Adam's home to swim in the pool. His house is actually the other side of the surf club, up on the hill. New South Wales Police yeah. Detective Sergeant Gerard Ivans investigated Darcy's death for a coronial inquiry held last year. He says there are questions raised by Adam Taylor's story going right back to the lagoon. Adam has told us that uh, they came here to the lagoon. Uh, he's got on the board and he's placed Darcy on the board as well. Uh, and that they've gone for a paddle. Um, and during that paddle, Darcy has fallen back from where he's sitting um, and bumped the back of his head. How do you fall backwards like that without hitting Adam? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one to understand. Um, we have been given or told two versions. One is that Darcy is sitting on his knees, uh, and the other is that he's sitting on his bottom uh, in that position. But either way, he's still going to fall backwards towards where Adam, Adam is. Taylor. That's correct. This is the only explanation Adam Taylor offers for a large, severe bruise that Darcy had on the back of his head when he was admitted to hospital. What do the experts say about whether the severe head injury that Darcy suffered could possibly have been caused by him falling back on that paddleboard? Yeah, look, certainly at the inquest, there was a consistent answer from the experts, and that was that the uh, injury or the trauma that they had seen in the back of Darcy's head could not have been caused by what was described as the fall on the paddleboard. So if he didn't get that head injury at the lagoon, falling off a paddleboard, where did he get it? That's a good question, and it's unfortunately at the end of the inquest that remains a mystery. Do you remember seeing the damage to the back of your little boy's head for the first time? I said, can I have a look? And they said, for sure, he's your boy. And um, <laughs> pick, and, you know, um, gently, and it was just all a boggy mass, and my hand just sunk into just a mushy skull. The mystery in this case is that the limited evidence given so far by Adam Taylor just doesn't explain the severe head injury suffered by little Darcy. The evidence presented to the coroner suggests that Darcy was most likely injured after he returned from the lagoon back to the swimming pool at this house, which is where Adam Taylor then lived. But Adam Taylor says Darcy wasn't injured at all while they were playing in the pool. However, he does admit that at one point they went underwater together. Yeah, so he describes picking Darcy up as in like under the armpits, holding him around the waist, um, and that Darcy is facing him as they jump into the pool together. How long was, was he underwater, does he say? Uh, Adam says they were underwater for a matter of a second. Uh, there was another person that was there that did see that happen and said it could have been up to three to four seconds. The person that contradicts Adam Taylor's version of events is his flatmate at the time, Nicole Warren. She's a fashion blogger who works from home. Nicole says that after being underwater for three to four seconds, Darcy vomited up about 400 mils of water. This is crucial evidence because at the inquest, doctors testified that the ingestion of too much water, known as hyponatremia, could have caused Darcy's brain to swell, which ultimately led to his death. Could a, a child like Darcy have ingested that much water in three to four seconds? Is that what the experts say? 
The experts have certainly said that that could happen, yes. Within an hour of vomiting the water, Darcy was dazed and cold. Soon after, he suffered a seizure. Adam Taylor called triple O emergency. He looks really sick, he's been vomiting, and he's unresponsive. He made a point of telling the operator about Darcy hitting his head. He bumped his head this morning when we went for a paddle. But yeah, he, he, look, he just doesn't look in a good way at all. By the time the ambulance arrived, Darcy was unconscious. When I walked into the hospital, he wasn't, wasn't Darcy. This is a different little boy. But I still felt like he was there. I saw Darcy just quiet, which was, wasn't normal. And uh, and so I just sat by, grabbed his hand and gave him a kiss and just thought, I'll just sit here until you wake up. Tragically, Darcy died the next day. What happened to my baby? I just want to know what happened. <laughs> I just want to know what happened. Two and a half year old Darcy Atkinson was being cared for by his mum's boyfriend, Adam Taylor, when he was rushed to hospital unconscious. He had a severe bruise at the back of his head. He'd swallowed a lot of water in a swimming pool. 24 hours later, he died in hospital. Compounding their grief, Darcy's parents, Peter Atkinson and Tara Maxwell, were then told by doctors and child protection experts that Darcy might have been abused. Detective Sergeant Gerard Ivans was the lead police investigator. There were a number of concerning bruises and marks on Darcy's body uh, that caused some of the experts to believe that Darcy had suffered some kind of abuse, yes. In fact, one of the experts said that he thought that Darcy might have been boxed around the ears. That's correct. And there were also these tram line marks. They were like parallel lines that ran along Darcy's arms and legs. The experts at the inquest indicated that to cause those marks, uh, Darcy must have been struck with some kind of rod or linear type of instrument. They were direct hits in similar positions and on the back of his legs and he had a bruise on his back, which looks like he'd been poked with a stick. So you think somebody was caning, whipping your child? Somebody was caning and whipping Darcy. But let's be clear about this. The coroner is very clear that there is no evidence that Adam Taylor has done anything to your little boy. There's no evidence. And you want to know where they came from? That's right. Darcy's left his body behind to tell his story. Medical experts have suggested that the injuries are not consistent with anything other than a non-accidental injury. Mm -hmm. And that Darcy was abused. Do you think that's possible? I think it's possible now. We now know Adam Taylor has a violent streak and a short fuse. Tara's friend, Tully White, had witnessed Adam lose his temper twice. The first time was at home, when Tara locked him out after an argument. He just got really aggressive really quick. 
he wasn't even out there for that long. And the next thing you know, we heard this massive big crashing sound. And then you see the table come flying through the window. There was glass everywhere. The second time was even scarier. It happened here at Tully's salad shop. Tully had criticised Adam Taylor on Facebook. He turned up with a weapon. He came to my store um, and he threatened me with a knife at the shop. He said, I'll use this on you, and then that's when he pulled out the knife. Was there any doubt in your mind that he was prepared to use it? Oh, no doubt. No doubt at all. I just, I, the, the look on his face, the look in his eyes, it was just, I'd never seen anyone look like that before. I had some fixtures on the top of my counter. He threw them off, trying to throw them at me. I was lucky enough I could step back out. Oh, so he was trying to physically hit you with things? Yeah, yeah. There were, I had a display on top of my counter and he picked it up and he threw that at me. Earlier this year, in yet another violent incident, Adam Taylor turned up to this bowling club threatening a man with a tomahawk. When police were called, he threatened to stab them, barricading himself inside his mother's house for four hours. Taylor pleaded guilty to 13 offences, including credit card fraud, drug possession, and the violent tomahawk and knife threats. He spent three months in prison. A lot of people watching this might be thinking, why did she let her little boy into the care of such a strange, unstable guy? I know. I regret that, and I will for the rest of my life. Um, but this person, this person was not the person that I, I knew then. I trusted somebody and I, I believed him to be a person that he's absolutely not. In July last year, the New South Wales coroner described Adam Taylor as an evasive and unimpressive witness and said that he had more of a story to tell. Mr Taylor stopped cooperating with police seven months after Darcy's death. Ultimately, the inquest found that Darcy died due to ingestion of excessive water which gave rise to hyponatremia while playing in a swimming pool in the care of Adam Taylor. If one momentary lapse, he turned his back and this little boy slipped and hit his head on the side of the pool and he'd slipped into the pool and ingested some water for it. Well, then wouldn't he tell, wouldn't he just tell us? Tara Maxwell moved to Darwin to try and get her life back together. Did you know how much I loved you? For Tara and her ex-husband Peter, the loss of little Darcy and the remaining mystery of what caused his death has left a huge hole in both of their lives. Still feel the last night I um, slept in the same bed and he was lying next to me and I said, Darcy, I love you and I'm so proud of you. For a two-year-old to puff his chest and go, my daddy is my best friend. I can't believe what I've done. What you've done? Mm. Why do you say what you've done? Because I left him in his care. Like, ultimately, it's my responsibility. You know, he's my son. Is part of that responsibility finding out what really happened to your boy? Yes. And you're not I won't stop until we find out. We need to find out. We asked Adam Taylor to talk to us about what happened to Darcy, but he declined. If you have any information, please contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. 
To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.